Yay, proofreading. I say two words and she has to be in my lap. Hello, it's Michael with Writer's Sanctuary. Today we're going to go over seven ways that you can proofread your own writing. Now, whether you're dealing with clients or creating your own blog, proofreading is probably one of the worst aspects of writing. You could be the best writer in the world and you will still screw up. But anyway, here are seven different ways that I proofread my work while writing a blog post for clients or when I'm working on my book. S plural. The first and probably one of the most effective that I've come across when proofreading my work is to read it out loud. Now this is because that your brain will have to process the information a little bit differently from just reading it to speech because it has to go through kind of like a secondary filter. So when you're talking out loud and you come across something that your brain doesn't make sense for speech, it's going to slam on the brakes. In fact, I can't count the number of times when I'm doing despair and I read the uh, story for the audiobook where I will catch errors while I'm reading it out loud that I, my editor, and Grammarly missed. So reading it out loud, definitely a way to go. Number two is come back to it tomorrow. When the content that you just written is fresh in your memory, you're going to gloss over a lot of the smaller problems because your brain already thinks it's, it's correct. So when your brain comes back to it the next day, your brain's like an etch-a-sketch and will erase everything and start over. Number three is to make sure you analyze each sentence. Don't speed read through the article. I know that a lot of us will practice speed reading because it helps with research and skimming through pieces definitely, definitely helps improve your speed. But when you're writing your own stuff, you don't want to speed through it. In fact, I don't even speed through it while I'm editing work from my other writers for my client. Every sentence gets scrutinized, which is how I'm able to pick up when there's redundancies in the article. And this is when you use the same terms or use the, you're trying to convey the same information, but wording it differently. That's redundant. So that whole sentence has got to go. My point is, is that you want to make sure you slow down while you're proofreading. You're not in a race. You just want to make sure it's done correctly. Number four is to use proofreading apps such as Grammarly or even Pro Writing Aid. I use Grammarly quite a bit on just about everything and it just, it works for me. Everybody's different, but you know, stick to what you know. But apps like Grammarly can go through and make sure at least some of the more glaring issues aren't going to embarrass you when you submit the work to a client or when you're writing a blog post. This is one of the biggest reasons why I have the Grammarly Chrome extension running on my browser at all times. Not to mention that it will scan through social media like Twitter and Facebook if you're using the desktop version. Number five is to plan for future rewrites, but this only kind of works when you're working on your own blog. Depending on the client, they probably don't want you rooting around their website to rewrite something that you wrote six months ago. But when you have your own website and you go back and read through stuff, even the things that you thought were proofread and polished, you'll come across a few things that are like, no, this is one of the reasons why I like to go through and update my older articles because I know that there's gonna be a few errors here and there, not to mention it gives you a chance to rewrite something if the information changed. You know, one of the biggest things Google loves is fresh and routine content. So you wanna make sure you're providing the best information possible. And this is aside from the fact where I've seen articles go anywhere from 200 to 8,000% increase in traffic just by changing a few things inside the article. So it's always worth to go back and rewrite some stuff. Next up is have a friend give it a once over. This is kind of similar to having an editor that you don't have to pay. The big thing is you want to make sure that your friend has a firm grasp of reading in the first place. It's like I have my best friend who goes through uh, when I'm writing Despair, I'm rewriting Seven, and she's also helping me fine tune Kingmaker uh, with my next book. And we've come across all kinds of things. And it's not just like glaring grammatical mistakes either. Uh, sometimes you'll pick up things where uh, maybe you wrote something that's a bit confusing to your audience. Someone going through your content can help you find those things that are confusing and help you polish them up. That's something Grammarly is not going to do. Grammarly will show you grammatically correct uses of certain words or spelling. But when it comes to down to understanding certain parts of your content, your friend's going to know more. And lastly, something I do quite often is feed it through WordPress when I have tools running. Now this is mostly for my own blogs as well as my clients because I do write stuff for their websites. In WordPress, I have Yoast SEO running that keeps track of the key phrases and all that good stuff. And it also tracks the readability to make sure that I'm not writing something that's way too advanced. And with the Grammarly Chrome extension running as well, because it works perfect in WordPress, I'm able to make sure that everything is grammatically correct, or at least close to it. Just remember that there's no such thing as a 100% accurate automated system. That includes AI. And we all know how I feel about AI. 
For me, perhaps the most effective is using WordPress, um, Yoast, and Grammarly at the same time. Of course, that also depends on what I'm writing. If I'm doing the blogs and client work, then definitely I'll feed it through. I have a website, a WordPress site set up locally on my computer that has Yoast SEO running as well as Grammarly will go through it because it's browser braced. But if I'm writing something like Kingmaker, Despair, or Seven, I'll read it out loud and then have my friend go through it and then we'll go through it with Grammarly and then I'll go through it again before I publish it. There's a lot of editing that I do to my own book. That's because I don't have $4,000 to pay an editor. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. For more videos about self-publishing, blogging, or freelance writing, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. I think that's going to do it for us today. And I'll see you next time.